Hello my loves, Tony here from TL Yarn Crafts and welcome back to my channel. And if this is your first time here, hello, welcome, come on in. I am so glad that you're taking a little crochet break with us. I have a feeling you need it. Today we are diving back into one of my all time favorite projects. This is my 2021 temperature blanket. I've been working on it all year, trying my best to stay caught up, but it's been a little tricky. I am a full month behind and I thought we could get caught up together. Now, if you're not familiar with temperature blankets already, no problem, here's a quick rundown. A temperature blanket is basically a representation of each day's temperature throughout a calendar year. Of course, every city, every town is different, so that means every single blanket that is made is unique, including blankets you make from year to year. I've been making a temperature blanket every single year for the last three years. My very first one was a Tunisian crochet blanket. The second one was a granny square blanket, which I will never do again. And this year I'm doing linen stitch squares. I did make a video on how to create a linen stitch square, and there's some info in there about how I'm using the linen stitch square in my temperature blanket. I'll go through some of that in this video as well, but I will link that here. I think it's on this side. I should know this by now, but I think the link comes up this way. For my temperature blanket this year, I am doing 12 linen stitch squares. Each round is a different day. Each square has 33 rounds, so the last several rounds are in white. I did that on purpose to make sure that each square kind of had a border. Now, I have actually been really good about keeping up with my temperature blanket this year, but I ran out of yarn. Thankfully, my friends at Cascade Yarn came through with the re-up. Thanks, Cascade. Appreciate you, boo. I figured for this video, we'll play it kind of fast and loose I'm gonna start working on my square kind of share some progress and what it's been like working on my temperature blanket all year and then I thought maybe we could like chitty chat a little bit because there's actually been a lot on my mind it's been a crazy start to fall so far and I need to like get some things off my chest so if you're down for all of that make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel before we get too deep into the content I did want to shout out today's cup of caffeine sponsor today that is Lynn and Lynn said I love listening to your explanation You've helped me become a better crafter. Thanks. And thank you so much, Lynn. I love doing tutorial videos. So the fact that you love watching them and they help, I mean, it's a win-win all around. If you like my videos and want to support my channel, buy me a coffee. Who knows? I might shout you out in one of my videos. Now that the bills are paid, let's start crocheting. First and foremost, let's get this beautiful package open. I want to give love again to Cascade for providing yarn support for my temperature blanket. They're super generous and not only supplying the initial yarn, but also any re-ups that I need. So thanks again, Cascade. I am so happy with the colors that I picked this year. I did end up changing them initially after February because they just weren't working together how I thought, but this is what I landed on for the rest of 2021. So let's just take a moment and further explore the colors that I'm using for my 2021 temperature blanket. First is Silver Heather, which is a warm gray. Then we have Camellia, which is a very vibrant pink. Desert Flower is a bright peach. Lemon is more of a sunny yellow. Green blue slate is a deep teal. Aqua haze is a mid teal. Pastel turquoise is exactly what the name implies. West Point heather is a denim blue. Ash rose is the absolute perfect mauve. Coral cloud is an antique pink. Forged iron is a slate gray. And flint gray is a light gray. In case you were wondering, yes, I got my nails done. It's the first time I've done shape and length and I literally don't know what to do with myself. I can't even handle it, they're so cute. When it comes to working on my temperature blanket, I like to keep things as low key as possible. It's the one project that I have ongoing that needs to stay organized. So I dedicated this basket to my temperature blanket at the beginning of the year. I keep all of the colors in here regardless of what colors I need for that month's square. So I can dig in there, grab the color that I need and just go. I've already added in the colors I was out of. I was out of this guy, this one, this one here, and I think this gray. Now that I have everything I need, I just have to grab my bag of notions. So this is my notions bag. In addition to this basket, I've also dedicated this notions pouch and these actual notions to this project so everything in here stays in here all year long inside of here I have the crochet hook that I've dedicated to this project this is from Crochet Styles the gal behind Crochet Styles and her husband make these gorgeous resin hooks she made this one for me let's see if I can oh my gosh do you see this are you seeing like is this not me in a crochet hook I adore this hook so much it's giving me perfect gauge for the DK weight yarn that I'm using and it's just it's gorgeous it makes a whole process just feel 
better. I'm an aesthetics person. I like pretty things around me, pretty things inspire me. So this hook has been doing it for me all year. I also have a pair of scissors in here, some stitch markers and a tapestry needle. I also have a Starbucks gift card in here. I don't know what the logic was behind that except that I always like to be prepared. Now I need to set up my iPad which is where I write down all of the temperatures and all the corresponding colors so that I have the full month at a glance so I can start crocheting and I don't have to stop. The app I use for taking notes about my temperature blanket is Notability. I actually use this app for all of my designing and it's always really fun doing things in different colors and different weights and just playing around. And by the way, please don't drag me for my handwriting. I haven't had to physically write many things in the past several years, uh, so it's not great. I'm going to start the month by writing out the numbers, of course, and in September there were 30 days. And then I'm going to go on my phone to a website called W Underground. Now W Underground does have historic weather so I'm able to find the weather for my city really really easily and then I'm going to write down all of the high temperatures because I'm only doing high temperatures for my temperature blanket this year so I'm gonna write down all the high temperatures and then from there I can write down the corresponding colors for all of those temperatures and then I'll know what the rounds are gonna look like for this month's square Once I get all my dates and colors written down, that's really when I start getting excited about that month's square. Even though I know what the colors are, I still don't know how they're gonna look when they all come together. And now that it's finally fall, September has rolled in, you can see towards the end of the month, I was getting a lot of variation in my colors. That gets me so excited. So now I get to pick what I'm gonna watch on Netflix while I work on my square. I was scrolling through before I started today's video and I saw that there's a second season of the show Sexy Beat. I think I might have mentioned it here before, um, but Sexy Beast is basically where single people go on blind dates, but they are in full on like movie makeup, dressed up as different characters and animals. It is the most bizarre thing I've ever watched, but I totally get it. I mean, going on blind dates is tough and it's stressful and you really want your personality to shine. So I think it's a really cool concept. I think it's also very ridiculous to watch like a fox and a seal have a conversation on a blind date. I'm gonna put on the second season and get started on my September square. Hey loves, voiceover Tony here. I figured we could chit chat a little bit, do some updates while I work on my square. Uh, so one thing that I have not mentioned to you guys yet is that I wrote a book. Yeah, I wrote a whole book. It's called the Tunisian Crochet Handbook. It debuts on November 16th and it is all about, you guessed it, Tunisian crochet. <laughs> The book starts with over 60 pages of instruction aimed at beginners, everything from how to use your hook, picking the right hook, making the stitches, finishing your project, and then the second half of the book is 20 brand new patterns. Everything from accessories to home goods to wearables. If you are interested in making it, it is in this book. Never in my wildest dreams did I think I would write a book. It was never on my crafty bucket list. It was never in my list of goals. But when I got the email from my future publisher and they're like, hey, you want to do this? There was something inside me that was like, you have to say yes. And if you take anything from this, just listen to that voice inside that tells you to do hard and scary things because it's probably for your good. All right, so I finished the first episode of season two of Sexy Beast and I started the second episode and it got me halfway through my square. So I have 15 rounds of the 30 rounds that I need for September. I'm so happy with what's happening here. It's definitely giving like 90s Nickelodeon vibes. I'm getting Double Dare. I'm getting Wild and Crazy Kids. I'm getting a little Rugrats in here. This teal with the pinks and the yellows, like I'm feeling this vibe. And this one round of green blue slate makes me especially excited because that's one of my cooler colors. I'm really settling into fall. Very very happy with it. Sexy Beast is like such a good show. I don't know why I've been obsessed with reality TV dating shows. Now not like The Bachelor and stuff. I just never. Something really just felt very misogynistic about like that whole vibe. One-on-one -on -one dates I absolutely love. Blind date classic adored it. Love is Blind, must watch, put it on the list. Love on the Spectrum, I think is a sleeper dating show. Grab your Kleenex because you're going to be rooting for every single person on that show. It doesn't work out for everybody, but the people that it does, you're just like, 
<laughs> Congratulations, I'm so happy for you. Sexy Beast is just fun and funny. Once they show the reveal of the girl that actually won the dates and the guy that she was with, like they were just smitten with each other. And I'm like, that's really what you want it to look like. There's a lot of pressure around dating right now. I feel grateful and feel blessed to have found my husband early in life. But I often think like dating right now seems like such the worst thing ever. So watching these shows and watching people try to navigate that and some of them at least honestly try to find that connection and find that person. I don't know. I'm, I'm a romantic in that way and I want folks to win. Now that we're halfway through our square, we've made some really great progress. I'm ready to move on to the next part. But in the midst of working on my square, I got a little delivery. I have obnoxiously large feet. I wear a women's 13, so it's a little tricky for me to find shoes in general. So when I do find shoes, I kind of tend to OD. I found some really cool shoes from Tori.com earlier this week. They just arrived already, which I'm like so excited about. So we're gonna take a little break for a try on. If you're down, I'm down, let's do it. First are these quilted slip-ons. I am a sucker for a black sneaker and I absolutely love these. Easy peasy for running out to shop or check the mail. Nine out of 10 would recommend. Next up are these cute faux suede pointed toe boots. I love a thick chunky heel. I also love that these have a little tab on the back so they're way easier to get on than you think. And they zip on the inside so Look, lazy girl, cute boots, these are definitely a winner. If I'm gonna show you the good, I gotta show you the bad. And these side buckle faux leather booties are worse than bad. I hate everything about these. The color is awful, they're too low and do something weird at my heels, and they just do nothing for the shape and size of my foot. Zero out of 10, please take them back. And the moment I've been waiting for, these absolutely gorgeous high hiker faux leather boots. I mean, just look at how sexy these things are. I love them. Now, I'm 5'11". I usually don't go for a heel, but these boots were just irresistible. The side buckle is fab. There's an inside and an outside zipper. Inside zipper gets them off. Outside zipper is just freaking cute. I mean, I just... Oh, hi, hi, Shiba. Um kind of in the middle of something okay fine loving for you yes can you please it's my turn get out of my shot thanks okay bye back to the boots yes love so that was fun and I promise this channel is not going to turn into like a clothes haul try on channel but it was a good time so I think I am going to keep the pointy boots uh the heavy tall boots and the quilted sneakers I am going to send back these mesh flats I didn't even show you those ones because as soon as I put them on I was like I know this is a no this is a no, not gonna happen. I'm also gonna send back the gray boots. I think the booty thing doesn't work for me. That in between just hits a weird spot on my ankle and I'm just like, I'm not gonna do that to myself. I'm not gonna do that to myself. <laughs> not gonna happen. But that was a fun little break. Uh, it actually got me very warm though. This sweatshirt and I also put on jeans. I'm like over here sweating so I had to go get some more water. And you know what, actually, let's take a 30 second water break. Why don't we do that? I'm gonna set an alarm for 30 seconds. You ready? Okay. <sighs> Three seconds, let's go. Oh my God. And of course now they're cutting the grass. Whew. I do not even drink water like that. And that is so cold and it gave me brain freeze, but it was so refreshing. I hope you drank some water too. If you're anything like me, especially if you make as much as I do, you don't drink nearly enough water. And we need to get better about that. We gonna work on that. Anyways, enough stalling. I still have 15 rounds to go of color on my temperature blanket square. And then I need to also do my three rounds of white. Yeah, three rounds of white to get me to 33. So let's get back to it. 
So while I'm working on my square this time, I'm actually going to listen to an audiobook. At the time of filming this, I was listening to a book called Call Your Daughter Home by Deborah Spira. I absolutely loved it, like nine and a half out of ten in my book. It's the absolute perfect kind of book that I like to listen to. It's told from the perspective of three different women shortly after slavery in the South. Each of the stories are very different and privilege and race comes into all of it, but ultimately they're all extremely interesting and this author does a fantastic job weaving these stories together. So at this point though I am reading a book called Ace of Spades by Farida and I'm not even going to try and pronounce the last name. I'm going to butcher it and I will be embarrassed but I'm only about halfway through and it's essentially about two black characters at this all-white private school who are being bullied by this anonymous person that goes by the name of Aces and they're just spilling all of their secrets which I'm not going to tell you any of them because I don't want to give anything away but you should check out this book. I am not typically a YA person. I love books about adults with adult themes and adult problems because I am an adult and I feel like I relate to those but something about the way this story is written is really appealing and interesting to me and honestly I'm so wrapped up in the story that I need to know who this aces person is. They're in the midst of trying to track this person down and they're going down all these twisty and turny avenues to find them and this person just keeps sharing the dirt. It is crazy so definitely check out Ace of Spades. It's a great book. Now that I'm in my third year of doing a temperature blanket, one of the questions I get all the time is how do I stay motivated to stick with such a large project throughout an entire year? That's always a difficult question for me to answer because I actually use my temperature blanket as that therapeutic opportunity to step away from my work. All day long, I'm sitting in front of a computer or working on projects that are related to my work. But while I love my work, those kinds of things are things that I have to do. Working on a temperature blanket is something that I want to do. So I've made it sort of like a therapy. I've created a ritual around it. I typically work on my temperature blanket on a Sunday. I've created a design that makes it so it's easy for me to catch up for an entire month in one day. So I can essentially pick one day a month to work on my temperature blanket and stay caught up. I also really focus on using colors that make me happy and put me in a mood mood that I want to be in and that's why I switched up my colors at the beginning of the year because I knew they weren't going to give me the positive energy that I ultimately needed. So if you're considering taking on a temperature blanket, make sure you're intentional about your colors, intentional about the pattern that you choose, and also intentional about how you plan to focus on this project throughout the year. It's not something that you need to work on every single day, but it does need a bit of attention and it can be that therapeutic step back from the things that you're required to do on a daily basis. Hope that motivates you and that you're really considering doing a temperature blanket because they're super fun. Hey, hi, I'm back. So I powered through the rest of my square. It's actually getting quite late in the day because I took some breaks to have some lunch, hang out with my husband, check the mail, open some packages, all that good stuff. But I am finally done with my September square and I thought it would be fun before I share September to show you all the progress that we've had over the course of the whole year. So here comes my squares from January to September. Here's January. February, March, that's one of my favorites. It's so fun and playful. Here's April and May when it started to heat up. <laughs> Here's June, the only time we made it over 93 degrees. That's this gray stripe. Here's July, it was a hot one. It was a really hot one in July. August, she's on the way, she's not quite done. <laughs> And I'm gonna finish this one this weekend. This one's gonna be quick though. And last but not least, the square we were working on all day today, here is September. <laughs> Isn't it cute? I don't know guys, I think this one might be my favorite. All of these little pops of green on the background of this yellow and pink, I'm a fan. I love it. It's kind of hideous, but it's also kind of perfect. I think this whole blanket is gonna be that way. <sighs> I'm so excited about this project. It's 
pretty much the only project that I've been working on just for myself all year. Um, there are some things that I want to make. I'm working on a sweater for a big trip that I'm going on and maybe a couple other things over the course of the year. But my temperature blanket really is that one project that I can constantly go back to whenever I just need a break and want to do something for myself. If you've been looking for that project that you can do in between other bigger projects or maybe things for your business or gifts that you make, a temperature blanket I think is a fantastic way to just kind of honor this time in history for yourself. You can of course do a temperature blanket for the current year like I'm doing or you can pick a memorable year. Maybe it's for a family member or for you know to celebrate an anniversary or from a birthday to a birthday. Whatever feels good to you, you can personalize this because ultimately it's your memory. If you're interested in starting your own temperature blanket and maybe you don't know where to begin, I encourage you to check out my brand new five part email series all about temperature blankets. So I'm covering everything from picking your colors, picking the pattern, getting started, staying motivated, all that good stuff that you need to stick to a temperature blanket from beginning to end. You can find a link down in the description to that five part email series, which is completely free. So I'm gonna sign off for the weekend. This has been super duper fun. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me out so much. Thanks so much for hanging with me. Have a fabulous day and I will see y'all next time. Bye.